Halo, good afternoon Tribuners. Welcome back with Memo Tiara in Indonesian News of Tribun Lampung. We will present you an updating and interesting information from every place in Indonesia. And here the complete news. The first news is, an Indonesian national soldier dies unnaturally. The family of the late Surgeon Second Wira Anugasi Torus took action in front of the Medan Military Court demanding justice for the death of their son on December 20, 2022. The deceased mother, Tioma Tambunan, cried hysterically at the location and hoped that the commander of the Indonesian National Armed Force would hear her demands. Wira Anugrasi Torus died on November 10, 2018 at the General Hospital in the Dumai area after receiving violence and unnatural injuries. The attorney for the family, Paul Taksilo Tunga, said that the death of the surgeon second Wira began when the deceased was unable to continue training and was brought in by an ambulance. But his leadership at the 004 Dumai Missile Detachment insists on forcing Sirkin Second Wira Anukrasi Torus to continue participating in the activity. Second Sergeant Wira Anukrasi Torus was even thrown into a canal so that blood and pit enter his lungs. The head of Horas Bang Sobatak North Sumatra, Thompson Parapat, who took part in the action with the family, of the second surgeon Wira Sitorus called Discuss, the Sambo version of the Indonesian National Army. The next news is hundreds of employees in the Chasan Busuri Ternate General Hospital went on strike. Hundreds of, uh, I'm sorry, hundreds of employees of the Chasan Busuri Ternate General Hospital held a strike action on Tuesday, the 20th of December 2022. This action is because the General Hospital in the Chazan Busuiri Ternate area has not paid their employee income benefits. What is known, TTP employees of the Chazan Busuiri Ternate General Hospital have not been paid for 15 months. According to TribunTernata.com's observation, employees are holding the main director of the Chasan Busuiri Ternate General Hospital, Alwia Asagaf, accountable. Apart from that, the employees ask the main director not to hide and to immediately meet the demonstrators to provide an explanation regarding TTP. As a director, you must be wise and not run away from the problems that are internal to the Chasan Busuiri Ternate General Hospital. Until the news was published, there was no response from the Chasan Busuiri Ternate General Hospital. The next news is dozens of crocodiles in Babana captivity are threatened with release. Dozens of crocodiles in Babana Captivity, Budong Budong District, Central Mamuju, are threatened with being released back into nature. This was conveyed by the captive manager, Rusli, when he was made at the captive location Babana Hamlet, Babana Village, Budong Budong District, Central Mamuju, on Tuesday, the 20th of December 2022. According to him, so far he has been overwhelmed by the high cost of it that must be spent every month, especially if there is no assistance with food costs from related parties, some of the crocodiles will have to be released. He said aside from his own expense, so far, feed aid has only come from the volunteers and alms from visitors. To support the cost of feed, managers install arms box in the breeding area for visitors. Bruce Lee said he had coordinated assistance with the cost of feed with the local government and the Natural Resources Conservation Agency, but nothing had materialized. For this reason, his party admitted that they would release some of the crocodiles if they were unable to bear the cost of feed. So, Rusli continued, of course, we would be even more overwhelmed if there was no assistance with the cause of it. Rusli explained it, in one large crocodile, it consumes approximately 10 kilograms of chicken meat or around 6 chicken. 
It is known that the crocodile farm in Babana village, Gudong Gudong district central Mamuju, has been established for two years. Now, the captivity is inhabited by 28 crocodiles of various size. The next news is, psychologist, I'm sorry, psychologist reveal Ferdi Sambo's true personality. The former head of the Professional and Security Division of Republic Indonesia Police, Ferdi Sambo, is said to have a personality that lacks self-confidence and a tendency to feel comfortable when other parties come to protect him. This fact was revealed by the forensic psychologist Reni Kusumo Wardani when he was present at the follow-up trial for the premeditated murder of Nofriansa Yosua Hutabarat alias Brigadier G on Wednesday, the 21st of December 2022. Ferdi Sambo, he said, was a person who lacked confidence when making big decisions. Not only that, based on his track record, Ferdi Sambo is also referred to as a person who always feels comfortable when someone protects him. However, under normal circumstances, the defendant in the premeditated murder case will be seen as a good person and obedient to the rules and norms. Not only that, Reni also said that Ferdi Sambo had uncontrolled emotion. Even at once, Ferdi Sambo could not control himself if he was dominated by emotion. However, said Trini, actually Ferdi Sambo is a person who has above average intelligence. However, that does not mean that Ferdi Sambo will remain calm if he is in an urgent situation and is filled with emotion. The next news is, instructors from England were brought into Indonesia to hold a soccer match. British instructor RC to be brought to Indonesia to provide training related to football match management. This was the statement by the head of the Indonesian National Police, General Listio Sigit Prabowo, in a press conference after visiting the Gelora Bung Karno Stadium, Central Jakarta, on just day 20 of December 2022. Listio Sigit said that the instructor is planning to be present in January 2023. Later, the training will be attended by clubs. The organizing committee, including the police and representatives of supporters, he said the reason for the instructor from England being brought to Indonesia was because organizing football there became a role model or example. The four-star general hopes that football security in Indonesia will be better with this training. The next news is, dozens of protected animals were secured from forensics from Vietnam. Dozens of protected animals were secured from forensic with defeat Vietnamese flag by the Indonesian National Army Navy, the main base of the Indonesian National Army Navy trailers in the waters of the Kapuas River Pontianak on just day, the 20th of December 2022 in the morning. The Republic Indonesia Sip Siribua, which was assigned to the main base of the Indonesian National Armed Force, managed to secure dozens of wild animals from the sea, which at the time was anchored in the middle of the Kapuas River Pontianak. Allegedly, dozens of these protected animals will be smuggled by sea to Vietnam. From the ship with the NAM and Royal 06 main base of the Indonesian Navy, 12 secured 16 proboscis monkeys, 19 white kokato, 1 raja tua, 5 ento, and 15 chickens. Head of the West Kalimantan Natural Resources Conservation Center, RM Wiwit Widodo Sedat. Regarding the animals that were secured by Indonesian Navy from the initial identification, the proboscis monkey that were secured were native to West Kalimantan. Then for the secure older brother bird, it is suspected that it came from Maku Maluku and Papua. Later, these animals will be handed over first to the Agricultural and Animal Quarantine Agency first. After being declared in good condition, then they will be checked 
by the Natural Resources Conservation Office before later being released into their natural habitat. In 2022, said Widodo, the West Kalimantan Natural Resources Conservation Center is the first time that the large numbers of wildlife smugglers have been caught. The last news is, the accused in the legal corruption case were acquitted, Andi Dodi Hermawan. The accused in the illegal corruption case over the conversion of a protected forest into a public fuel filling station in the Stata Dui Mamuju West Sulawesi is now free from the legal process he underwent. Deputy Chairperson Member of the Mamuju Regional People's Representative Council could not hold back her emotion and express her gratitude when he officially left the Class B Mabuju Detention Center on Tuesday, the 20th of December 2022. Based on Tribune Sulbar.com monitoring, Andi Dodi bowed down with gratitude when he left the prison door and was picked up by his wife and children. The politician from the People's Conscience Party was seen wearing an orange long sleeve shirt. It seemed he was carrying a sheet of paper or proof of release from the detention center. He came out of the detention center at around 11 p.m. at night and was immediately picked up by his family using a car. Andi Dodi admitted that he felt very happy and felt relieved because what was suspected of him had not been proven guilty. He said he is also very grateful to his family who always provides support. He emphasizes that in the material of the case he went through, it had been declared not guilty and was now free according to the judge's decision. Well, I think those all the news for today with me, Mutiara. Don't forget to follow us in YouTube Tribun Lampung News Video, Facebook Tribun Lampung, Instagram, and TikTok account of Tribun Lampung for further information. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.